the optimal length of time for dual antiplatelet therapy has been one of regular debate, shall we say, over the last few years. Does the type of drug eluting stent used make a difference? That's the question. We have benefits and risks of extended dual antiplatelet therapy after embryolemus eluting stents. And this is a uh, featured clinical research at TCT and then online before press at Jack Interventions. And I with Dr. James Hermiller, MD, who is uh, from St. Vincent Hospital in Indianapolis, Indiana. I mean, the question specifically as it relates to EES versus paclitaxel eluding stents was raised in the DAP study, correct? That's where it first came about. So let's go back to that study first, and, and what did that study yeah. show? So I would say leading up to DAP, there were lots of studies suggesting that the stent thrombosis rates from taxis or paclitaxel eluding stents were higher. And then in DAP, what was done was to randomize patients who did well for a year on their DAP therapy to either continue DAP for another 18 months or aspirin alone. And the patients that were enrolled, about 10,000 of them with DES, about a quarter had taxis or paclitaxel eluting stents, about half had EES, everolusive eluting stents, which is sort of the contemporary stent, and the remainder were uh, first generation stents. The overall outcome of the DAP trial was reduction in stent thrombosis by about 70%, and improvement in major adverse cardiovascular and cardiocerebral events, MACI, reduction about 30%. Uh, and the question was, was that benefit because you really drove a lot of patients with paclitaxel eluting stents to not have stent thrombosis? And so was it really that, or was it a more generalized uh, effect? So what you're looking at here in reporting at TCT and the Jack Interventions relating to the paclitaxel eluting stents and more likely the EES. Yeah, it's, but this it's, was specifically it's, it's, it's the Focusing EES. on that one. And yeah. what did you find? Yeah, so what we found was, first of all, we thought, that's much more relevant to today's practice. That's what we're using. True. And what we found was that still had a significant reduction in stent thrombosis by about 70%, but the absolute reduction is only about 0.4% because the stent thrombosis rate overall is much lower. Okay? Two, the reduction in myocardial infarction, about an absolute 1.1%. In the overall trial, about half the patients the reduction in stent thrombosis was due to non-stent-related MIs being reduced. But with EES, more of that reduction is due to just infarcts outside the stent site because the stent thrombosis rate is uh, lower. Uh, what also was found was MACI was no different in the EES group, which was interesting. And why was that? It was because there was a higher mortality. Okay? And so part of what we looked at with this uh, manuscript is what was the cause of that difference in mortality in this right. EES group. And what we found was it was due to non-cardiovascular death difference, which was really the majority of it was driven by malignancy, higher malignancy deaths in the right. thionopyridine group. We know that the current era of drug eluting stents is so much better than the earlier DES. So what's this teach us? Yeah, what I think this teaches us is Dual antiplatelet therapy with our current stents is more about secondary preventive therapy, preventing non-stent related infarcts, than it is really stent thrombosis because those stent thrombosis rates are very low. And the trick, what's difficult, is trying to figure out who is at high enough risk for ischemic events that the downside of bleeding right. is worth the risk. We're still fighting over that. Yeah. The, the arguments still continue. Do you come down on any particular side or? So I, I would say there are uh, some data. Bobby Yeh at this meeting presented uh, an ACS subgroup from DAPT. And you know, it looks like particularly in that group, prolonging DAPT for another 18 months is going to be uh, very beneficial without uh, a downside. There are probably other subgroups, diabetics, those with uh, a lot, uh, uh, multivessel disease, et cetera. I think we need to tease that out. We'll, we'll learn more about that over time. So there should be confidence in using a Everlima saluting stents. Uh, yeah, contemporary stents are good. I think uh, whether it's these days Everlima saluting or Zotarolima saluting stents, we've got great stents that um, after a year, uh, very low stent thrombosis rates. Well, this is coming up in Jack Interventions, so please check that out. It's going to be online, so if you're looking at this video, that means the embargo has passed, and so you can head on over to Jack Interventions online before press and see Dr. Hermiller's uh, paper on the benefits and risks of extended DAT after Everolimus looting stents. For CardioSource World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire. <laughs>